Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Ala Sayyidil Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Rabbi shrah li sadri Wa yasir li amri Wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani Yafqahu qawli Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum Inshallah in today's session We have an account of what took place Between Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun And the end that Fir'aun met After he had transgressed all bounds In terms of disbelief and tyranny The story of Musa alayhi salam Is the most frequent and detailed of the Quranic historical accounts. It is mentioned in many of the surahs and at times different episodes are given greater prominence than others or at times the entire story is given in quick successive scenes skipping over details like we see here in Surah Nazirat. Surah Nazirat, the encounter between Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun, it opens with a call to Musa alayhi salam to the sacred valley of Tuwa and it ends with the destruction of Fir'aun in this life and his eternal punishment in the hereafter. In the context of Revelation, these verses, they have two purposes. The first one is revealed at the peak of brutality in the Meccan era. It is to reassure and comfort the Prophet ﷺ and his believers that victory will eventually be for them, for the patient and the oppressed, regardless of how powerful the oppressor is or how long the oppression lasts that this kind of rejection it is not the first and neither will it be the last historically greater bigger and more powerful individuals have walked down the same path and thought they were invincible before being brought to their knees and eventually to their sad end that we see in the story of uh, Pharaoh. The second purpose, of course, the set of uh, verses, they serve as a warning to the disbelievers of Quraysh that if they persist in rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will suffer the same fate as Fir'aun and his followers. So keeping that in mind, let's get started with uh, our lesson today. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وبسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتاك حديث موسى has the story of موسى حديث story come to you you referring to رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم remember this is one big conversation it continues from where we left off Allah سبحانه وتعالى instructs رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم what we saw in the previous passage as they were talking about how are we going to be brought back to life in a way of mockery and ridicule of the message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just let them be it's between the lines right let them be let them continue to be in their disillusioned state all that will take to end this is that one loud shout zajratun wahida it will be just one loud shout and they will be brought back to life not their life on earth but their eternal life. And that's when the conversation now switches to the encounter between Musa alayhi salam and uh, Fir'aun. Why? This rejection that you are experiencing, that you're encountering, this is not the first time. This is not the first time that someone has turned away from the message of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite having provided all the proofs and all the evidences, right? So this is how, this is th this is just to establish for you the continuity. So now, halataka hadith Musa, إِذْ nadahu. رَبُّهُ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ تُوَى Remember, is remember when his Rabb called him, called him where? بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ Wadi means valley, مُقَدَّس means sacred. To the sacred valley, what is the name of that sacred valley? Tuwa. Why is it called مُقَدَّس? Sacred because Allah's kalam descended here. This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam. Now, the details of that first conversation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself to Musa alayhi salam makes him aware that he is the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That first conversation, details of that is mentioned in other places in the Quran. Here, in keeping with the overall theme of the surah, it is touched upon very briefly and therefore, Next, the surah goes immediately to state the command of Allah's to Musa, right? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Musa alayhi salam? Idhab ila fir'aun innahu taqa. So like we said, in between there are various details. Surah skips over, goes to the command or goes to goes to the instruction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to Musa alayhi salam. Idhab, go. Where? To fir'aun. Why? Innahu taqa. What does taqa mean? He, to cross limits in terms of disbelief, in terms of ethics, in terms of morality, in terms of humanity. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs Musa alayhi salam, go to Fir'aun. Why? Due to the fact that he crossed all boundaries in terms of any kind of decency you can possibly imagine. And then say what to him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in ayah number 18. He instructs Musa alayhi salam to say, فَقُلْ Say, هَلْ لَكَ Do you want إِلَىٰ أَن تَزَكَّ Do you want to clean yourself? Clean yourself from what? From shirk. By testifying, La ilaha illallah, that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second part of the message is, Wa ahdiyaka ila rabbika fatakhsha. Do you, first he says in ayah number 18, do you want to clean yourself from shirk? If yes, then let me show you the path, ahdiyaka, to guide, to show. Let me guide you, literal translation, to your rub. What is meant in between over here is to the ma'rifa of your rub. Ma'rifa meaning knowledge of your rub. Why? So that you become fearful. Fearful, khashia, is the kind of fear that results due to knowledge. What did Musa alayhi salam do next? 20. فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَى Therefore, he showed him the great signs. Great signs such as what? The hands, the shining hand, and the staff turning into a snake. Let's pause and reflect for a moment in, on these three verses that we have read, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs Musa alayhi salam to go, not just to go to Fir'aun, but he also tells him as to how to address him. He says, say to Fir'aun, do you want to purify yourself? Do you want to cleanse yourself like we see in 18? And that, so that I can guide you to the ma'rifah of your Rabb. And the purpose for that would be to build this fear, to develop this fear within you. And for all that to happen, let me show you some signs. That is the sign, the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Musa alayhi salam to establish that I'm not anybody. I am the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm not just talking from my own. This power is granted to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's pause and reflect for a moment, like we said, on these three verses. Fir'aun, the greatest tyrant on this earth, even he was offered the opportunity to gain knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ma'rifa. In the exchange between Musa and Fir'aun, where Musa says, let me change the color over here, where Musa says, Hallaka ila antazakka, wa ahdiyaka ila rabbika fatakhsha, is a monumental lesson for us, which is that the first step in nasiha is always, in nasiha, da'wah, or tazkiyah, is always to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is to establish the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, you know, Makki surahs, the, the scholars have identified the difference between, one of the differences between the Makki and the Madani surahs is that the Makki surahs they seek to establish the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore the, the, to, to generate that appreciation that gratitude that leads to falling in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Madani surah it tells us the how to's the do's and the don'ts it's, it, it establishes the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you cannot expect someone to follow someone without them knowing, for, knowing them first therefore Ma'rifa comes first and that's what Musa alayhi salam is being instructed to start with when he is doing his nasiha or da'wah to Fir'aun. And what is that knowledge supposed to do? Fatakhsha, like we spoke over here. The purpose of that knowledge, Fatakhsha, so that you fear. The purpose of that knowledge is not to scare man into submission or force him into submission. When we hear the word fear, it is not the fear that we have or we experience when we see a lion or a tiger. That's not the fear that's being implied over here. Rather, this knowledge, it should lead to a kind of fear that actually puts the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in man's heart. It is the kind of fear that leads man to a station of gratitude towards his Rabb and then eventually voluntary submission. There's no force or compulsion here. That fear should automatically lead him to wanting to submit to his Rabb. SubhanAllah, if we analyze our lives with all sincerity here, we, all of us, will conclude that our life is that our life is interconnected with one another in a way that we are dependent on one another. 
How so? We all begin life dependent on others as babies. I mean, can we? Can I just go about life on my own? Of course not. We all begin life dependent on others. We all end life dependent on others. Meaning, uh, the Quran describes it in a very powerful way. We return them to the worst of the ages. Surah Nahal, Ayah 60. In fact, it is not just at the beginning and end, but we are profoundly dependent on people at every stage of our life, despite how much we want to think of ourselves as independent. People help us through life. And as a result, what is expected of us? That at the least, we show gratitude to them, right? We feel compelled to show. I mean, and the one who does not thank man, the one who does not thank someone who has done so much for him, we question. We question their sense of decency. So because someone is helping us, we feel compelled to show gratitude to them then what about the one who created us and fashioned us? I mean, man cannot say that he created himself, that he fashioned himself, right? That he gave birth to himself? No. When Musa alayhi salam says, وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَىٰ in ayah number 19, he uses the word Rab, and that is very intentional. He could have said, Wahdiyaka ila Allah. He could have just used the word Allah, but he uses Rab, the word Rab that has the meaning of the one who tends to you, the one who nurtures you, the one who maintains you, the one who sustains you. Therefore, the word Rab is supposed to remind us of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. And that reminder should result in a fear, in a fear of disappointing the one who has given us all. Gratitude, therefore, is the finest approach to life. Without it, a person loses his way. Ingratitude eventually results in tyranny and rebellious behavior. I say eventually. If it is not put in check, then that's where we are led to. And that's what we see reflected in Pharaoh's behavior. What was Pharaoh's response to this beautiful and warm invite to Musa alayhi salam when he said, come, let me help you. Let me show you the path. Let me tell you who your Rabb is. Uh, number 21, فَكَذَّبَ وَعَصَى He denied repeatedly. Kazaba has that meaning of repetition. He denied rep repeatedly. He rejected repeatedly. Not only that, he disobeyed. As a result of that rejection, the scene continues to describe his rejection further, his rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 22. Thumma adubara. Adubara yudbiru idbaran means to turn back, right? He turned back. Yasa'a rushing away from Musa alayhi salam, his message in his denial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Essentially, ayah number 22 is illustrating for us how Fir'aun was determined not to accept the truth or submit to the right. What else did he do in his rejection? Ayah number 23, فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَ He gathered, gathered who? Hashara means to gather, gathered his magicians and his men, his army. The surah does not give details of how he gathered all his magicians and men. It simply says that, remember, the event is mentioned here in quick succession, right? It simply says that he went away to do so. And then it also mentions mentions his blasphemous statement where he says, where he gathered all these people and he says, فَقَالَ Ana rabbukumul ala. I am your rub, the most high. He's talking to his people. That I am that that there's no one above me. Na'udzubillah. Attributing lordship to himself. As a result, what happened to him? 25 skips over all the details in between in terms of where Musa alayhi salam, it was not just one time where Musa alayhi salam showed him the miracles. Miracle after miracle after miracle was granted, right? For a number of years, for decades, Musa alayhi salam continued to preach to Fir'aun. But when that moment came where it became abundantly clear that Fir'aun was not going to change his way. That's it. The decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took hold. And that's what we see in ayah number 24. فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him to account نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَىٰ Now, what does نَكَال mean? نَكَال means example for the punishment. There are two ways to understand this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him to account by making him an example, Nakal, an example for the punishment. Nakal has that meaning, example for the punishment in the Akhirah and in the Dunya. So Akhirah, can, Akhirah means Akhirah and Ula means Dunya. 
How did the punishment in dunya happen? Drowning him in water. And how is the punishment in the akhirah going to be? Burning him in the fire. The reason the akhirah is mentioned first before the dunya, even though the punishment in the dunya comes first, because the punishment of the akhirah is more severe and it is for eternity. And this is the real punishment for the tyrants. Since the surah is talking about the hereafter, it is appropriate to give the akhirah prominence first. All right, so that's one opinion. It, uh, we made him, Allah took him to account by making him an example of the punishment in this akhirah, in akhirah and in this dunya. And then the second interpretation is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him to account for his, or he made him an example of the punishment for his statement the last statement and the first statement so what are these statements that we're referring to the first statement in another place in the quran where again Fra'un, he attributed lord lordship to himself when he says lakum min i do not know of anyone else but me as your lord this is when he's talking to his people right same thing we see and the second statement is is, is mentioned in this surah which is ayah number 24 again talking to his people so this is the opinion that we have, another opinion that we have of uh, Akhira and Ula, that either it could be referring to the punishment in this dunya and in the Akhira, or it could be referring to the, pun to the punishment that came upon him because of the two statements that he made. The first statement and the second statement. Akhira is referring to the second statement. The second statement is mentioned in the surah, and the first statement is mentioned in another surah, which is مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنِ لَهِنْ غَيْرِي in Nafidalik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this account of uh, Fir'aun and uh, Musa alayhi salam with this statement here. In Nafidalik, indeed, in that narrative, in, in the mention of that history, history between Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun in a snapshot, skipping over details, right? There is what? Ibra. There is a powerful lesson. Powerful lesson, not for everybody. Lima yakhsha, who wants to who wants to gain the knowledge yaksha okay we'll loosely translate it as to fear right but it is the fear that leads it is the fear that comes from the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can say indeed in that is a moving lesson ibra is a moving lesson for the one who makes every effort to gain that knowledge and become fearful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have fear in his heart of what of disappointing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has given him everything, the one who is his rub, that fear that does not cause him to run away from him, but actually towards him. This is the reassurance for the believers. This story is the reassurance for the believers that despite the nature of the tyranny or for how long it lasts, to Allah belongs all power and all authority. Fir'aun had power and he had authority and he thought he had the ultimate authority, but none of this benefited him and history is witness to that. This fact, only those who know their Rabb, who have the Ma'rifah, they will be able to benefit. Those who do not, they continue in their deviant ways until they reach their appointed time. In the next passage, the surah turns to the disbelievers to direct their attention to the power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll continue from ayah 26 in the next, sorry, ayah 27 in the next session. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Salamun alil mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.